So in keeping with the current Xeon E5 series obsession, we have the Lenovo ThinkStation D30 latest acquisition that as per usual has been shafted in the post. Or I've been shafted by an eBay seller again, I'm not sure which, sometimes it's hard to tell. So this is a very similar system to the Lenovo ThinkStation C30, which I also have one of, which I've been meaning to do a video on for a very long time and also haven't. But it's a bit more, I think it's a little bit better equipped than the C30. It's got more memory slots in it for certain. And the system, the, the actual case is designed for much bigger, higher powered components. Whereas the C30s are smaller, more, more of a comp quite compact workstation really, considering the size of it and that it runs a dual uh, Xeon system. The C30 is pretty small, it's probably I'm getting on for half the size of this and it's, it's not as deep. Yeah, so I just want to have a quick look at this and just to fire it up and make sure it does actually work. Um, because, well there's two reasons really, it's got damaged in the post a little bit, although uh, it may not have got damaged in the post. And the reason I'm saying that is when I bought this, the listing had a stock picture on, so I asked them to send me a picture or some pictures of the outside and the inside because the pictures they sent, the case was a bit, it wasn't the best on the outside, it was scratched, the paint was scuffed, fair enough, I wasn't too concerned about that. But the front fascia was intact as it is on this one, no problems there. They say they put like a a vinyl wrap on these, which they've done. Uh, it's not the best of jobs, I'm going to be honest. But then, to be honest, they're just trying to shift these and make money. And it probably looks a bit better than it would have. And I wasn't that concerned. But what, from what I've realised, looking at the photos, this isn't the system they took pictures of. So they've taken pictures of one system and sent me a different one. I, I really don't understand why they would do that when I asked for pictures to see the item. So I, it sort of got me a little bit suspicious. Yeah, so this, you can perhaps see here, the case isn't quite fitting together right here. And I thought that this top piece, I get some straight edge on it, this blanking plate, or back plate should do. You'll see that there's a gap under it. And I thought, oh, this had been dented. I thought this was pushed downwards. But what I've realized is that's actually difficult to see here because of the white walls. This part of the case is pushed up and that's why I think this is all badly aligned here. And there's a gap that starts narrow there and it gets wider and wider and wider. And this top panel has been pushed up. And if we look inside, you'll see there's a little hole under there and that hole is where that rivet that's broken out and the other half of the rivet, rivet, rivet? I don't know if frogs in the box. Um, the, the other half of the rivet was in the box, so this has obviously got forced up somehow. It's snapped the rivet, it was basically cut the rivet off, and that's why that's got a bow in it. So I'm going to have to probably try and get the rest of the rivet out, maybe drill it out. That should then pull back down. Hopefully, that will take the bend out of the top, and then that will be all right. It's only a minor, minor thing. Um, I noticed this clip shorter than that one, I, and that was on the pictures. I thought it was broken, but I think this is actually by design because of the hard drives here. I'm not 100% sure, but the case stays on. There's some scratches and that down the side, but they were on, or similar ones were on the, the one I got photos from. Now the other, the other frustration with this is the back. Now they put this in the box back down with the fascia facing upwards in the box and I understand why they've done that to stop it getting smashed. Unfortunately, because this case has a handle that sticks out in the back which is supposed to be a little straight like that, it's got bent down so it's bent the top part of the chassis and it's also bent in this part of the power supply on the back here. Now I think that's going to be repairable, it's just another pain in the arse job that I didn't need. And I've shone a torch in there and there's nothing anywhere near contacting that to short out. But it's just annoying, a bit frustrating. And the stickers on the back of here are definitely different to the one they photographed. So 
I might send him a message just ask him about that because it's a bit a bit odd but that's the system it's a bit of a monster of a case it weighs a bloody ton like everything I buy seems to weigh a ton the power supply is absolutely huge I think it's 1100 watts because this system is basically designed obviously to run probably two fairly high powered Xeons if you wanted and also kitted out to be able to take a few high-end graphics cards and some hard drives so they've wanted to cover the bases looks like we've got at least nine SATA ports in there which is ridiculous I don't think we'll be needing nine of them uh, what have we got two 16x sized card slots that doesn't mean that they're actually going to run at 16x uh, three actually two PCI and four 4x PCIe. Oh, there's another SATA port down there. I wonder why that one's on its own. Uh, another thing you'll notice with this board, as I was saying, it's got full complement of RAM slots. So you can get half a terabyte of RAM in this, I think, whereas I think the other one's limited to 256. So uh, I think that's 32 meg uh, modules. So the Xeons will do four channel memory. So that's two DIMMs per channel and that's per CPU. If you want to populate the second lot of memory slots you have to have a processor in because the memory controller is actually on the processor so if you want that much RAM you've got to have two CPUs as well. I don't think this has got a particularly great CPU on it. I had a quick look on eBay at what came with it and it was like the processors are 10 quid so it's, it's nothing special generally for a reasonable dual Xeon board they're about 100 plus quid this whole thing was about 130 so that's not bad going it's come with a, a graphics card which is I think they're only worth about 20 quid we've got a 240 gig SSD shoved in here not worth a great deal but still useful and obviously a huge power supply and I quite like the case actually that would be even nicer when it's not not been kicked in. Well I've just plugged the power in and it started itself up so maybe it's set to auto power on or something. That's what we got. Didn't really get to see that. Oh, it's got Windows 10 installed and it's booting. I did wonder if there'd be anything on the hard drive. Uh, yeah, just a moment. Windows 10's most popular thing to say to you. Just a moment while I fuck everything up for you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so it seems to be starting up. Um, I think I did already... You shouldn't do this while it's on, but... Uh, fuck it. Um, yeah, I did already check the socket. I've been caught out with that too many times now buying stuff not checking it and then finding out there's a problem with it so I'll try and make the effort to test test stuff at least at a minimal level it's rebooted itself for some reason that didn't sound very good did it Yeah, probably shouldn't be pissing about with the uh, CPU socket while it's on, but why did my PC restart? Because it's running Windows 10 probably. That's usually a good part of the problem. Let's, uh, let's power this thing off. Yeah, 2620, 16 gig of RAM, that's what they said. So it's got four 4 gig sticks in it. Which is actually quite a useful amount for basic stuff. I am actually going to be shoving all the RAM in here from the cheer server for now. Whether that will stay like that long term, I don't know. Depends on what I find to do with it. But yeah, that seems to be uh, stuck in a, a loop of failure. But as I say, I don't really give a toss. It's Windows 10 and I'm not interested in Windows 10. Yeah, so it's starting up. Not sure why Windows 10 is crashing and quite frankly I don't care, not interested. 
So I'll be putting Linux on here, certainly to start with, just to mess about. So I'll try and get a couple of the uh, processes that I've already got on this. Probably put the two 10 core processors on here and the RAM and the tuning heat sinks. Um, I'm probably going to have to take the whole motherboard out to do that, which is going to be a real pain, but it'll be an opportunity to give it a bit more of a clean. I've, I've blasted it down with the compressor already, but I know there's still quite a bit of fluff in various places. And also, if I take the motherboard out, I can have a look at this, then, and if I do need to drill it, I've not got to worry about getting any bits on, on the board and causing a short. And I can check the fans and whatnot out. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to get around to it, uh, we'll just have to see. It's just too much to do, not enough time, not enough energy. Yeah, so I just took the fascia off of this, just, just going to pack up, I was just looking at a few bits and yeah, it's definitely been damaged a little bit because you can see the plastics. So it's definitely suffered some kind of an impact. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and see if there's some glue I can use to repair that. Somebody did tell me about some glue for repairing ABS, so I'm going to have to look into it. Try and get hold of some. Something that this apparently works very, very well, better than most other glues. So I'll just have to give that a go. Yeah, it's a shame, really. But it's not absolutely trashed it. These bits are the, probably the most important ones. Uh, although they're... Yeah, that is damaged, actually. Yeah. Those two are fine, That's just, that one's damaged, so yeah, a bit annoying, a bit annoying. One thing I do want to do, although it does look like it will leave a large gap at the top of the case that I'd have to somehow fill, and that would be to remove this bloody handle because I think it's awful, although it does obviously serve a very useful purpose. It, I think it looks hideous. It's not something you'd find on the side of a truck or a fridge or something. Uh, it's just a bit annoying. So there's probably going to be some little bits of plastic flying around in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, I should probably probably pull this apart, do what I can with it, straighten everything out. It's just going to be a real pain because I'm going to pretty much may have to. <clears throat> depending on what I can do with this back bit, how, what level of accessibility I get, I may have to take this entire top side and bottom panel off. It's, it's all one piece, it's one big C-shaped piece. I was also thinking of removing this drive bay as well, this rack with these removable bays. It's not particularly going to be useful in here, if I were to put drives in here, I'd mount them differently. Probably there, but probably the other way around them differently. And to take this out, I'm probably going to have to take that side panel off as well, because I can see that there's some kind of riveting through the back. It looks like it's riveted on through the back. It's either that or some kind of alignment pegs. Well, we'll see. I'll come back to this at some point.